So you've been diagnosed with AFib. Here's a secret. You can live a happy and healthy life. And here's how. AFib can be confusing, so I've created a heart health guide to keep it simple. It's free to download and you can follow the link below. So what is AFib? AFib or atrial fibrillation is an irregular heart rhythm that originates in the top part of the heart. The heart then doesn't pump in the same manner that it would if you were in what we call a normal sinus rhythm. Similar to how electricity works in your house, there's a specific pathway that electricity should take. If the electricity is not using the path that it was meant to use in your house, then the electrical activity is not functioning at a level that it should be. So that's very similar to atrial fibrillation where your heart is pumping, but it's using a different or an irregular pathway of electrical activity. When I'm suspecting atrial fibrillation in a patient, there's a few ways that I can diagnose it. Usually it's with using an electrocardiogram or an ECG. In patients who may be having symptoms of an irregular heart rhythm, we might also make you wear a heart monitor that will help us diagnose atrial fibrillation. And these days, these fancy watches and heart rhythm monitors also can potentially identify early atrial fibrillation as well. And so it does need to be confirmed by a doctor and by an EKG or by a heart monitor, but wearing a wearable device that may track your heart rate can also potentially diagnose AFib. There's a number of different treatment options for atrial fibrillation, so let's dig into each of these. The first is lifestyle modifications. Often, we tell people to make sure that they're controlling their sleep apnea because that can trigger AFib, minimize the amount of alcohol they're taking in. Some people are more sensitive to caffeine than others, making sure that you're losing weight because obesity can trigger atrial fibrillation as well. And so making some of those lifestyle changes will help control your atrial fibrillation. These days, we also can try to get you back into a normal rhythm because we know that the heart prefers to be in a normal sinus rhythm. And so we may do either a cardioversion, use medicines, or even use an ablation to help keep you in a normal sinus rhythm. Let's talk about an ablation. Ablations are an invasive procedure where an electrophysiologist will actually make a scar in the heart to help prevent atrial fibrillation from occurring. This decreases that trigger of atrial fibrillation medications. So there's a lot of medications that we use. Some medications we use to control your heart rate when you're in AFib. And there are other medications we use to keep you out of atrial fibrillation or antiarrhythmic medications. Now, one of the most important medications when we're talking about atrial fibrillation are blood thinners. Based on your risk for stroke, we may or may not recommend taking a blood thinning medication. These blood thinners help protect and minimize or reduce your risk of developing a stroke because of your atrial fibrillation. And last but not least, cardioversions. Sometimes if your heart is in atrial fibrillation and we're trying to get you out of it, we may need to actually apply electricity while you're sleeping to try to restart the heart back into a normal sinus rhythm. Those are some of the ways that we can control and manage atrial fibrillation. And you can talk with your doctor about what would be best for you and your lifestyle. If you don't address your atrial fibrillation, if your heart rate's too fast, you can potentially develop heart failure. And you also may have symptoms of palpitation, shortness of breath, and decreased exertion. Now, if you do control your atrial fibrillation or have ways to control it, minimize it, or completely reduce it, then you will live a happier, healthier life. If you want to hear more information about atrial fibrillation and other heart health tips, make sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more.